Hello everybody, my name is Karen O'Bannon and welcome to Kingdom Kids. Today we're going to be talking about black girls in gymnastics with my two special guests, Mackenzie Grinter and um, Taylor Graham. Y'all ready to talk uh, girls in gymnastics with yep. me? Okay, good. <laughs> gymnastics is my favorite sport. Awesome. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to tell me everything you know about it. But first, we're going to talk about the sport in general. In um, 1976, when I was a senior in high school, there was a young girl on the scene named Nadia Comaneci, and she took the world by storm because she was the first person to score a perfect 10. And um, I remember everyone thinking about how amazing that was, and anyone who saw her clips would agree, um, particularly to watch her on the floor. Her floor ex exercise was flawless. And um, I think the world might have wondered if there would ever be a time when someone would come up behind her who could amaze everyone the way she did. And several years later, not only have other gymnasts mesmerized everyone with their talents, but um, many of them have been black women. And uh, so I'd like to share with you some of the black women who have made it to prominence in the, the um, sport of gymnastics. Uh, one is uh, Dominique Dawes. She is a three-time Olympian. Uh, the first black person to win an Olympic gold medal in gymnastics and the first black woman to win an individual Olympic medal in artist gymnastics. Um, then there's uh, Gabrielle Douglas. Uh, she was the first black woman in history to become an individual all-around Olympic champion, uh, only American all-around champion to win uh, multiple gold medals in a single Olympic game and she was a member of the 2016 U.S. Olympic team. Um, I know you know this one, Samiles Biles, uh, Simone Biles, excuse me, she holds the record for the most gold medals won by a female gymnast in world championship history. Uh, she was the first African American to become world all-around champion and she was a member of the 2016 and the 2020 U.S. Olympic team. I know you remember her. Then there's uh, Diane Durham. She was the first elite U.S. Olympist to uh, train under legendary coach Bella Caroline, a uh, two-time junior national champion and senior national champion. There's uh, Lu Lucy Collins. She became the first black female to make an Olympic team in 1980. Uh, then there's Kyla Ross. She's the Olympic golden, gold medalist of the, um, the Fierce Five in the 2012 U.S. gymnastics team. Betty Okino, world gymnast championship silver medalist of the 1991 U.S. Olympics team and Olympic bronze medalist of the 1992 U.S. gymnastics team. Sophia DeJesus, uh, she's an elite gymnast of the UCLA uh, Bruins gymnast team since uh, 2012. Uh, she gained notoriety in 2016 for viral video for floor exercise routine incorporating popular hip hop dance moves. <clears throat> then there's Dion Foster. She became the first elite gymnast in history from the state of Alabama at the age of thir uh, 15, a member of Alabama's 1991 NCAA Gymnastics Championship team. There's Andre Pickens. She's an elite University of Alabama gymnast, won 14 All-American honors, and won two NCAA individual titles. There's Deandra Milliner, an elite University of Alabama gymnast who won eight All-American honors, 
and contributed to the team's 2011 and 2012 championship wins. Morgan Dennis, who won six All-American honors and an NCAA title as University of Alabama gymnast, and Ashley Miles, University of Alabama gymnast, who was a member of the 2001 bronze medal winning world's team and earned three NCAA titles and earned 12 All-American honors. Now those are uh, some of the, the great um, African-American women who have uh, graced the stage in gymnastics. And um, I got those uh, pictures and statistics from the Essence.com ma magazine. You might want to check that out because uh, it's a phenomenal article and a, a very good read. So um, ladies, are you familiar with any of the, the names that, that we just talked about? I was familiar with Simone Biles. I literally watch her every single day. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing my gymnastics, I watch her videos and try to pretend that I'm her. Okay. She's quite the role model. Uh, how about you, Mackenzie? Yes, um, I have heard of Simone Biles a couple of times, and I'm really amazed by her gymnastics. Yeah, she's, she's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. Did any, either of you watch the Olympics this past year? I watched did you? Mm -hmm. What'd you think? She was like an amazing person ever in this gymnastics world. I pretend that I was doing gymnastics while I was watching it. I, tr I, pr I tried when I was on the beam. When I was on the beam, it was really cool. Okay, great. Um, what made you decide that you wanted to do gymnastics, Mackenzie? Um, so I, I think I was just watching Simone Bow's flip whenever I was like six. And it was just so amazing to me. So I tried to recreate it, and sometimes I would get a, I would stack up some pillows, and I would just flip on top of the pillows, and it, and it just grew to be old. Okay, how about you, Taylor? Um, I really like gymnastics because I always wanted to be Simone Biles when I grew up. I would want to be a gymnastics teacher and be in the Olympics. I've been doing gymnastics since I was three or four. Okay. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos. I do gymnastics and contortion. I always do it on my bed. And I have like these walls in our apartment, which I do like handstands, back walkovers. It's really fun. So you said you've been doing gymnastics since you were three or four, and how old are you now? Eight. Okay, so you've been doing it for a little while. Um, so how long have you, did you say you've been doing it since you? I've been doing it for six years. For six years, okay. I actually saw some footage of you when you first got started. I know. <laughs> it was really cute. Um, so what would you say is your favorite exercise to do? Um, I would say floor because that's what I'm usually best at. Okay, well, what about you? Um, I normally do like beam maybe. Okay, the beam. The scary I really like beam. doing cartwheels. You get to jump. It's really fun. Okay, so you like uh, like flipping around, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, how often do you practice? Um, I often practice like three or four hours a day, and always on Tuesdays or Wednesdays I do gymnastics at gym time. We so when like you go to your hours. gymnastics, is that once or twice a week? Like once. Once a week? Mm -hmm. And then you practice at home? Mm -hmm. How about you, Mackenzie? Well, sometimes I practice at home, but if I'm very busy. But <coughs> usually I do five hours a week for my gymnastic classes. And uh, usually it's on Tuesdays and Fridays. Okay. So you do a total of five hours on those two days? Mm -hmm. Got gotcha. you. Do you practice at home? Sometimes. Okay. I remember when, um, well, first of all, I'm going to say <laughs> I'm stiff as a board, so I don't do gymnastics very well, although I used to really want to be a cheerleader when I was in elementary school. I used to be a cheerleader. I used to be a cheerleader. And I, 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 I actually did put the uniform on <laughs> and pretend to be a cheerleader, but I wasn't very good. Oh. So I didn't stick with it for very long. But I did take piano lessons when I was a kid, and I do know that... Um, Although we only had uh, practice once a week, 
If you really want to be good, you have to practice at home. My granny and papa has a piano at their house. I really want to play it. Do they? Well, <laughs> you've got long fingers. Maybe you can try that when you're not um, doing gymnastics. So, um, what's it like standing on the, on the beam? Um, I, ha I really have to keep my feet steady so I can balance on there. And sometimes I get really scared, but my teacher says, try your best. Don't be scared. I'll help you if you need help. Okay, how about you? For me, it's scary, but usually I have to use a whole lot of core muscle because now that I'm about to start gymnastics stuff again and stuff, it's getting a lot more harder to actually balance. So do you have to do like, um, like extra exercises in order to strengthen up your muscles? You have to like practice a lot before we do the thing. Okay, so you warm up and then you do like a like a practice and then you start your routine practice? Yes. Okay, yeah, that sounds, sounds about right. Seems like every sport pretty much has to kind of do that in order to strengthen up the muscles that you need in order to carry out the exercises. What about the, um, the um, what do you call the, I'll call Bar. them like the trash peas. <laughs> yeah. What about those? Do you like doing that? Yeah, those are like my second favorite ones because it seems super easy to me. Usually I can beat out most of my class sometimes and okay. it's super fun. I hear you, Simone. <laughs> what about you, Taylor? Same, the same thing. Okay, good. Um, how long does it take to learn a routine? It takes about one or two months because usually you have to get your part down and you also need to know the main parts of it. Okay. Does it take you two months also? No. Uh, when I'm at gym time, I like to try to learn like the flips how to do. It takes me like three or four months to do because like sometimes I'm really scared because all of our apartments are hard for. I really need some carpet to do some. Okay, so um, the matting that they put down on the floor, does that, does that help take some of the fear away? Yeah. Uh-huh, because it's nice and soft if you fall down and it doesn't really hurt that much. When do you know it's time to remove all that and just look at the floor? Whenever, like, you are, you know you are ready for it and you know you're ready to push yourself. Okay. And sometimes, like, when you have to, like, when you, like, when you're really scared one time, you have to like stretch a lot to do that move because you're really scared. Okay. Um, so, um, do you ever get a say in, in how your routine is going to go? Or does your coach just kind of tell you this is what the routine is and there's no flexibility? Mm, usually, she gives us a routine and we have to learn it by a certain time sometimes, and you just have to go with whatever she tells you. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, well, that makes sense, especially right now because you're still in your formative training. Um, so, what makes a good gymnast to you? Um, what makes a good gymnast is like to try your best, don't give up, um, don't, yeah, don't be scared, try your best. What makes a gymnast strong. for me personally is to make sure you're brave and passionate about it and make sure you're not doing it because you just want to and having people waste their money and time just for you to just do it for fun and not for hard work. So you have to really love it, first of all, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to do the work in order to, to be good. Yeah, like if you want to be a gymnast, you can be a gymnast. If you want to be a piano, do a piano. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember a whole lot about my piano lessons because I haven't played in a long time. The <coughs> Excuse me. Um, how much practice would you say that it takes to go from, say, being a good gymnast to being a great gymnast like Simone Biles? I would say about almost 20 hours a week to get up to close to her level because you have to work on all of those other routines and all those skills on each thing and it's hard. Um, really, if you want to be like really good at some mobiles, you have to stretch a lot. It might take like eight years to be like her because she's really, really, really flexible. She is. 
And you know, I saw, um, I guess you could call it a documentary. I don't know if it was long enough to be called that exactly, but they did an article on her and they showed some of the exercises that she does in order to make her body flexible like it is. And it's really hard stuff, you know. I saw her, you know, lifting up on the, um, on the pole, which, you know, takes a lot of upper torso strength. And, um, you know, I've seen her stretch out and all of that. And um, I just really have grown a new appreciation just from seeing that, knowing how much is involved in, in being a great artist. But most great artists are, you know, they put in everything they have. And like you said, you know, you have to be serious about it. You can't just want to do it because it's, it's the fad of the day or it's fun to do right now. You have to be dedicated to it. So um, I appreciate you all for saying that. And, you know, it kind of speaks to your dedication in the sport as you are participating in it. Um, do you ever... Um, get nervous like before performance well first of all have you all had a chance to perform in say a competition yes you have no. have you not not yet okay so tell me what that's like well whenever you first walk in it's super scary but you also get some time to practice and you have a whole lot of people staring at you which puts a whole lot of pressure on you and if you fall off during something or if you mess up you actually have some time to regather yourself okay so um, how long is, a, is a, comp um, a competition day? Is it like from the early in the morning to late at night or no, half a day? or? it's probably early in the morning to like the noon or something, okay. somewhere in that area. It probably only takes three hours because you have to do each event and everyone has to go once. So. Oh, so everybody's competing at the same time? No, it's like one person goes and then another team and then oh, one okay. person from, yeah. Got you. So how many competitions have you participated in, do you know? Um, I think four. Four? Okay, how'd you do? I did good. Good, good. Are you looking forward to your competition? Mm-hmm, like for cheerleaders to go out, they keep practicing. Like at this really good song they're doing, it's really cool. Okay, wonderful. All right, so, um, why do you uh, do participants powder their hands and, and bandage their, their legs before a competition? What's the purpose behind that? So, like, if they, if they put it on there, like with the little thing that you put on for the beam, mm -hmm. it's really, like, so you can stick on it. Because that's, like, the sticky stuff that you put on, so, like, you won't trip or nothing. That helps you a lot. Okay, so it's more than just powder? Mm -hmm. It's chalk that you put on your hands, you put on your feet for ball and beam, and bandages are usually for like rips. If you usually get rips and it hurts very bad, then you can use those. Okay. Have you ever pulled a muscle while you were doing a routine? Mm, no. no? Uh, when I was on trampoline, um, he, he said we have to do some flips on trampoline, try your best. Um, Hurt my finger, jammed it. Okay, but you recovered just fine, right? Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Um, so, uh, do either one of you have aspirations to go to college? Would you like to go to college? Yeah, mm -hmm. I want a scholarship, hopefully. Mm -hmm. That was what I was going to ask you. <laughs> because um, every time I, I thought about a sport that I participated in, and actually I ran track when I was in school, um, that was my my uh, sport of choice and you know that's the first thing that comes to my mind is scholarship because it's a way to pay for your education without um, having to come out of your pocket and um, and it also gives you a good experience because sports in college is is fun you know it's a it's a lot harder because everyone is coming from other places and they were the star where they live and you may have been the star where you live so everybody's kind of on an equal playing my, ground. And my dad ran the track in college, so he was running the track, and there was like this bully on the track, so he got really sad. He could just cry, but his best friend helped him and cheer him up. Well, that's good. Um, um, you say he ran track? Do you know what he ran? What events did he do? 
don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, just a little side talk there. Um, so, um, do you think maybe a scholarship is possible for you? Yeah, yeah sure. I think so too. And the opportunities are, are endless. You could get a, a partial scholarship, you could get a full scholarship, you know. And even if you don't get a scholarship, I think everybody should participate in something other than the academics because it's part of the, the process that helps you to become more well-rounded. So um, I'm glad that you're, you're thinking in that, that way. Have you um, thought about what kind of a college you would like to go to? Do you know what you want to even do yet? <laughs> I want to be a gymnastics teacher. You told me that, okay. You want to be a gymnastics teacher. Okay, so what do you want to be? Do you know? Mm, like whenever I go to college? Mm -hmm. Well, I usually have, I have three options. I have a gymnast, um, a cook, or a baker. Okay. For those options. Well, I've seen your gymnastics skills and I think you can do it if you really Because if you do like cooking and gymnastics together, you can do gymnastics move while you're cooking. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something to see. That would be something to see. So, um, have either of you considered going to a black college? Mm, no, mm. not yet. Not yet? Okay. But you have? Okay. I always wanted to go to a black college. I didn't, but that was because... Um, I always wanted to see what black college looks like. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like the black experience. Both of my brothers went to black colleges. Mm. I didn't go um, because at the time I was chasing a scholarship and so you know I went where they were offering me the money um, so um, do you um, do you think about maybe going to the Olympics someday yes I really think I want to go to the Olympics okay and see what you I know got. there's a lot of work involved in that right it's a lot I have to practice like four hours a day or five and maybe even longer and the prospects are, are good for you all to go sooner than later because the, um, the Olympics is only every four years and then, you know, gymnastics is a very young sport. A lot of the women who participate are really young. I think uh, uh, Nadia Komenich that I mentioned earlier in the interview, she was maybe nine years old when she in it. Um, and back then, you know, a lot of the gymnasts were really young. They weren't the teenagers that, you know, and the young women that we see now. Um, so, um, have you um, uh, ever heard of the twisties before Simone made it a common word uh, in gymnastics? think so. I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. Well, um, when she competed in the Olympics this past time, she sat out a couple of her events because she wasn't feeling her best and she didn't want to take any chances on uh, messing up her body trying to, to do the routines. And um, in the end, it came out that she had what, uh, what she called the twisties, which is when you um, are doing a flip in the air mm -hmm. that you know sometimes your your mind disorients and you can't really tell where you are so your landing may be off and um, because she experienced that she didn't want to do her routine because she didn't want to hurt herself so um, like you not like you can't like when you're doing something in the air you forget what to do you not you might not stick it like that. Yeah, I still like that. That's what happened. So, um, but she's fine now. In fact, I think she's on tour now. She's got her and some of her um, gymnast friends are doing um, a show. And they're traveling all over the, possibly the world. I, I know they're traveling exciting. throughout the United States, but possibly the world. I, I don't really know all the places that she's going. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about it? Mm -hmm. No, yeah? not yet. Okay. Well, if she came to Louisville, would you go see her? Yes. I would too, most definitely. Me too. I was so I would be so happy, like literally so happy to see her. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I would definitely go see her. Um ask well, questions. Um, is there anything you would like to share with our audience about gymnastics that we haven't talked about? 
Oh, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, not really. Okay. All right. Well, um, I happen to have a clip of both of you in action. Um, your grandmother took a clip uh, in one of your rehearsals, <laughs> Mackenzie, and it's really awesome. So um, if you don't mind, we'll just take a look at it right now. showing you guys my gymnastics moves. The first one is easy. I have to keep your legs straight to do it so you can do it. Next is a down dog. That's pretty easy. Um, let's see what else. You could do the splits really easy. You just have to really stretch your legs so you can do it. Do back bend. Pretty easy, and then you can stand up. You have to push your body up to do it. Um, like okay, so um, I guess that's a wrap. I thank you both for um, showing up today and for sharing your gymnastics ex experiences with us. Um, it seems like more and more young ladies are getting involved in gymnastics and particularly black young ladies. And so I'm very proud of you and for the accomplishments that you've made so far. I hope that you will continue and take it as far as you can. And maybe one day I'll see you in the Olympics. Or maybe I'll come visit you at your college in one of your competitions. Who knows? Okay. Well. Um, and I thank you all for tuning in today. Um, I appreciate you being here. Um, we'll see you again next week.